In the debate over Islamic migration into Europe and the U.S., no-go zones are a common topic. In these zones, there are virtually no non-Muslim residents allowed. Supposedly, Sharia law reigns supreme, and even police try and stay away. Now, the left has argued for years these zones are imaginary. They don't exist, and anyone who says they do gets attacked. Now we have a man who's an ex-Muslim, by the way, who spent a lot of time trying to get to the bottom of it and has, we think, the truth about no-go zones. Raheem Kassam is editor-in-chief of Breitbart London. He's a former advisor to UKIP leader Nigel Farage in the UK. He just wrote a book, No-Go Zones, How Sharia Law is Coming to a Neighborhood Near You, and he joins us now. Raheem, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having so me, So you'll, you'll, of course, remember vividly a couple of years ago uh, a show actually on this channel was roundly attacked for asserting that there were parts of Paris where non-Muslims couldn't go, a no-go zone. And the left in the U.S. said, that's outrageous, it's bigoted even to suggest something like that. You just wrote a book on it. What's the truth? I did just write a book on it. I, I got tired of the same thing a lot of viewers of this channel will be tired of, which is denialism. Uh, it is fingers in ears, la la la, we can't hear you. Um, we don't want to admit what's going on in, in our cities, in our countries, in our, in our neighborhoods. Uh, and that's what this book is really about. I traveled across Europe and even to places in the United States uh, where I see Sharia law emanating, where I see uh, dominant Muslim populations dictating what can and does happen in their neighborhoods. I've seen areas in which terrorists find enclaves and find shelter. I found places that actually uh, young white girls just can't go, otherwise they're harassed and set upon. Uh, these, these phenomena aren't new, but, but we do have a way to go before the political establishment especially uh, appreciates just quite the level of, of, of degradation in these areas that we're talking about. These are areas where police are often afraid to go in small numbers. They often have to go in large numbers. In some places, they actually have to negotiate their way in with local community leaders. Postal services won't go to some of these places. And I'll tell you what, uh, Tucker, you know, uh, walking around these areas myself and, and seeing for myself the rampant welfareism uh, which, is, which is pushed upon these people, upon these immigrants, by the left-wing political parties, I was, I was absolutely mortified. Well, it's shocking. I should say, you, you can't see it. There's a live picture uh, beneath you of the President of the United States arriving uh, in New York City. Uh, there it is right there for our viewers. That's, of course, uh, the Marine One, the famous presidential helicopter uh, in New York, and he's getting out. Um, so, Raheem, tell me this. No-go zones couldn't exist without the complicity of the host country. I, I have noticed over the years a weird kind of embarrassment, probably inspired by guilt on the part of European political leaders where they don't want to talk about this, they deny they exist. What does that come from? What is that about? It comes from many places, actually. I mean, a lot of it comes from the rampant corporatism we have now in, in, in the West. Um, these demands for cheap uh, migrant labor uh, that are foisted upon governments by right. massive corporations. And, of course, massive corporations sponsor a lot of this stuff. And they sponsor a lot of the hard leftist groups that protest uh, when somebody like me comes out with the truth about these issues. Uh, but also it comes from the fact that there are a lot of political leaders across the world right now who simply don't have uh, a vested interest in the future of the West. If you look across Europe, for instance, uh, the leaders in Germany, Angela Merkel, in Italy, in the United Kingdom, in France, uh, all childless. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, the, the, the leaders that do have children are far more invested in the future of their nations uh, than the leaders without. And I think, you know, there is this strange, it's guilt wait, on the wait, one can hand. I, wait, can I, can I stop you right, can I, can I stop you right there? Sure. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say anything like that in public, certainly not on television. And I just want to say, God bless you for saying that. Because <laughs> there's, there's something to that right there. You do have a different perspective when you've got to think through the next 70 years, right? When you're not going to be there. Um, of course, and no wow. doubt I'll be sent upon Tucker time. for saying something like that. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm really glad that you did, and I'm going to steal that because it's true. It's, it's absolutely true, and everyone knows it's true. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming on tonight. I hope we see you again. My pleasure.